What's up, family? Thank you for tuning in to the Dream Nation podcast. My name is Casanova. I'll be your host, and I'm excited to be bringing to you entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and trailblazers from around the world. Stay locked in with us because we're about to go on a journey that will change your life. Good day, Dream Builder. We are back again with another episode that I'm excited, and this is going to be one that's going to rock your world because we have somebody on the show today that's going to inspire us. But not only that, she's going to teach us about one of the blueprints out there when it comes to being a better leader and also being able to grow your business. So without further ado, please help me in welcoming my sister, Miss Lynn Padetti, to the show. Lynn, you want to go ahead and say what's up to Dream Nation? What's up, Dream Nation? Well, I love that welcoming speech, and I'm so excited to be here to share my dream life, the dream, the life that I didn't have 10 years ago, and I kind of manifested, and I'm really excited to share all that journey with you guys. So, yay! Yeah, you know, it's going to be phenomenal. Uh, we were just talking before a show, and you were telling me about how you've had breakthroughs with your adversity to now being able to have, you know, a dream business. And I love that in the picture, in the background, it says, if you dream big enough, everything can come true. Right. Anything and so I don't know if that's by coincidence or if, if that's maybe what you always film in, but I always have to. I absolutely love it. And so the way that I always love to start off is by giving the proper introduction. And the way that I do this is I compare us as entrepreneurs, thought leaders, superheroes, or change makers to superheroes. And the reason why I do that is because I feel like us as superheroes, we're flying around the world, we're putting on a cape, and we're trying to solve some of the world's biggest problems. And I know that's what you're doing. And so what we do know is behind every Wonder Woman, there is that Lois Lane. And so what I want to ask you is behind the Wonder Woman that we know today as Lynn Podetti, tell us who is on the inside that Lois Lane? Yeah, so the inside, uh, I would say that about 10 years ago, prior to 10, 10 years and before that, I was a lost soul. I mean, I kind of came from a very strict Asian family, a Vietnamese family, just almost like you know, my, the North of Vietnam communist style dad who was always very dictatorship style. And my mom was also very controlling. And so, but it didn't suit my personality. I was always that type that kind of questioned everything and didn't really listen to, you know, to the Asian parents. Usually Asians are very obedient. And yet I was always just like, no, you know, I'm not listening to you because you don't make any sense. And, but they are also so strong that we really clash. I rebelled. I ran away from home when I was 13, 14, I don't know, almost like every year I was just trying to get out. I was also forced into child labor from the age of 10 doing sewing for my parents because we came to Australia at that time and they just really needed me to help them with work and so I was forced into that I guess that kind of hardship very early on which you know really caused a lot of trauma inside of me and I eventually just tried to find myself by rebelling dated a lot of bad people went into that dark world and from drinking to drugs to a lot of bad things and eventually I also had a kid at 19 so my son right now is 17 years old. And so you can imagine a young girl going through so much struggle at that time and just losing herself, lost and trying to find herself. I went into a lot of dating, different relationships and I wasn't, an, I didn't love myself. I didn't know who I was. I was just, you know, and I would say I was even a hurt person trying to hurt other people too. Mm. And finally, 10 years ago, I guess I woke up to my reality and said, all right, hold up, you know, like just take a breather, stop going from one relationship to another, stop trying to change your life because you, you've tried to change. It doesn't work because you're just using, I guess, stupid strategies like going out drinking and partying and, and just blaming that, you know, maybe I shouldn't have dated this person. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. And it was never about me. And finally, I just had that moment. Remember, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure you've been there where you finally felt like this is the lowest point and it's not even about being a, having a kid because even after I had a kid, I was still dating someone else and then trying to find that perfect love. And it was only until I had a, you know, a breakup with one of this guy and that I felt that I was really in love with that shook my whole body and shook my whole mind that I was like, you know what, maybe I am the problem. Maybe all this pattern of all my disastrous uh, events were not these people. It was me, you know, I was the person. And so I guess it empowered me because I kind of went, okay, if it was me, God, I need your help. And finally I surrendered to the universe or the God out there. And, and then all of a sudden I got shown some light in terms of 
just, you know, seeing a video from Oprah or seeing uh, Tony Robbins, it was just all of a sudden I can see things. Right. And then I just took one thing at a time and studied and learned. If they said to do gratitude, I did gratitude. If they said to do a vision board, I did a vision board. And in that one year, I just basically listened to anything that I was taught because I didn't know any better anyway, right? So let's just give it a go. And even to the point of giving money before you even have money. And I remember starting a new business at that time and single mom broke as well. But you know what? Give it a shot. Give away the money that you have and you don't have it. But they said, the more you give, the more you get. Just put up that house you want on the vision board. Who, how do you get it? I don't know. <laughs> just right. kind of like, who cares? Just do it. And in that year, my whole life changed. So all of a sudden you know, my husband found me on YouTube and he was like a, a 35 year old guy, never been married, never had kids before, just found me on YouTube and invited me for a business meeting. And I was like, okay. And then he was in love with me and then we got married and, you know, I moved to, to another city and the house that I put on my, on my vision board came alive. And when I got over to um, Sydney, I bought myself a car already and, you know, a 30 K car. And when we got married eight months later, he said, I want to buy you this new car. And I said, I don't want it. Cause I already bought myself a car. He's like, no, you really need, I want to get you this car. And it was the car that I had on my vision board. It was a BMW. And so let's just say that year taught me that the power of dreams is kind of like, wow, I can actually dream so unrealistically. And as long as I put in the hard work and believe that, well, it should be true because someone else has done it. So I'm going to believe in it. And it changed my whole perception of life. And so ever since then, I guess I dare to dream a lot bigger. You know, my new dream is getting into acting, to be an actor, to, I don't know, be worth a billion dollars so that I could even help more people. And, you know, I'm already helping people through my current business, but it just makes me go, why not more? Why not dream more? And I think that, I guess that's the message to everyone. That is my story. If I could turn my life as a single mum to this kind of life now where, everything is fulfilled from relationship to a family, to a business, to everything, then you can do it too. Wow. Such an impactful story. And I want to go back. There were so many meat, uh, so many meat and potato moments in there. The first thing that I want to ask you is for you now that you have a more holistic approach on life and you have a mindset of abundance is what it sounds like. Do you have, have you rekindled the relationship with your parents? Because it sounds yeah. like that there was that trauma in the beginning. Yeah. So I had to forgive them by myself, meaning I, there was a moment where I had to write a letter to myself, forgiving them. And, you know, I was always, what I love about personal development is you always feel like there's more to develop. And right. so even when I manifested my dream, I was always loving to learn more and learning. And I have a life coach that I see regularly because I'm always, what else can I find out about myself? And, you know, it, I think even the first few years, I was really proud that I proved them wrong, you know, like, yeah, you know, I did it. And, in a way, it was a bittersweet. It's kind of like, I, I, you know, you kind of like shove it in your face, you know, right. now that I did it. And even at my wedding, I was uh, happy, but I was upset because it's like, now you're happy for me because I've done it, you know? Where were you when I needed your help? And in that way, it's very so you bitter. you still invited your parents to your wedding? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we made up, but it was, you know, like kind of, I can't wait to prove to you because, you know, right. you never believed in me and I'm going to do this to prove to you. And why are you happy now when you know, that, that I don't need you. So it was inside. I was not like, I, I'm always going to be that sweet daughter. Like, look, I clashed with them when they were, were hurting me, but when they don't hurt me, I'm not like out there trying to get them. I was just inside hurt, if you know what I mean, but I still right. treated them very nice and stuff. But it was just through my own development that I was like, I need to forgive them. I need to let them go. And I wrote a letter to myself for giving my own parents. And it just liberated me. And over the years, it got even more better and better. I was able to reward them, like as not reward them, but I mean, is surprise them with a new car or take them on holidays. The things that they never apologize, by the way, they've never, because, you know, Asian parents, a lot of pride, a lot of like, well, you know, if I didn't do that, you wouldn't be where you are kind of attitude. And so... I guess we rekindled early on, you know, our life looks normal, but fully rekindled in terms of my soul and my peace. I would say the last, you know, three or four years where after I did that whole letting go on forgiving them and knowing that I guess they were hurt or they had their own trauma when they were growing up. And the way of protecting me was to stop me from getting my dreams because if I try to go for my dreams, what if I don't get it? So I guess they were just trying to, 
helped me, but yeah. not in a good way. But now I'm really excited because they have turned 360 now. Basically, they they call me for advice. They believe in me. So when I told them this new dream that, Dad, I actually want to get into acting. I want to be an actor. Okay. Like they, he actually didn't say anything. And that is the right. good thing. Or if I told my aunties and and because I took my mum and my their her sister, her sisters, they've got five sisters. I, I took them on a holiday for my mum's birthday. And now they have never experienced anything like this. Like my niece is taking all of us on a holiday and, you know, whatever. And so when... I said, you know, my dream is to get, you know, to achieve even more. And they're like, good, you know, we're rallying for you because we know that if you can already help us now, we know that you're going to help us more. So I think it's in a good place when the only way to sometimes not revenge, but I guess success is the best revenge is what I'm saying. It's kind of like, there's only so much you can say to convince people that I can do this or I have my dream and can do it. The only way to show is do it. And once you do it, they will be on your side. And it just gets a bit easier because now you don't have people clashing with you. They're actually wanting you to succeed that they can also reap the benefit. <laughs> right. No, for sure. And and it's so powerful because I remember you saying that like they didn't believe in the beginning, but now they ask you for advice. This is exactly the scenario that I went through. I had my uncle and I just talked to him this morning, which is about an hour ago. But I remember in the beginning, I had so many big dreams as a young kid and, and my family never, not that they were against me, but it was always like they tried to diminish the dreams like they tried to suppress it to be like don't keep dreaming that big and and just like you said i think that it was because they had traumas in their life and they weren't able to fulfill those things so they only know the level of capacity that they've been able to experience so it's hard for them to tell you to do something that they've never done and so i just i, I had so much of a connection with what you just said my question to you is for somebody else that says, oh man, Lynn, that is exactly where I am right now in my life. And I want to take that turning point. And you talked a lot about in that year that you started to manifest everything. You found Tony Robbins and you found Oprah and all these things. How much was your environment a factor for that? Were you, did you feel like in that first year, it was just you, Tony Robbins, Les Brown, whoever else it was, or did you feel like you found a group of people that were local or even online that was able to help propel you? Where were you at in that journey? Yeah. I, yeah. At that time, I guess I, when I look back, I actually even regret not looking for communities and looking for more like-minded people. So at the time, and even for the last five, six years, even in my entrepreneur world, I always felt like I was alone in my journey and but I think nowadays I'm in a different place and I actually even have more networks like I needed that back then but now I even have more communities there's so much more Facebook groups and, and clubhouse and there's so many places that you can connect with people now so if I was to give someone advice yeah you need to change your environment and and finding more people that are go-getters but at the time I just couldn't find any other go-getters it was almost like me and this big dream like you know I'm the only one with this big crazy dream and I'm the only one in this you know path of personal development as well and so but the other but that's the, the real the real uh what that's what happens in life and sometimes you can't wait for someone else to be there you can't blame that oh well but no I don't know anyone else it's sometimes as bad as it is you have to be on your own journey and eventually you I don't know like last year, I met so many amazing new girlfriends that because all, all I want was some, you know, friends that live near me that were, you know, some Asian women that have kids and are very success driven and aren't scared to dream. And I didn't find them until last year. Whereas before that, everyone was all, you know, they dream very small. But one thing that did change was I moved from Melbourne to Sydney and Melbourne was that place of my childhood where I was the party place, right? The place that I knew my friends every weekend even though I didn't want to go out anymore, the weekend comes and there's someone's birthday and it's something on this. And I would always be hooked back into that lifestyle, but being able to move to another city because of my relationship really did help because it was like a new environment, even though it's not about meeting more people that were dreamers, it was just at least meeting more people that were just home body people, people that just family oriented, not really going out. And I didn't really need more party friends, you know, and that helped it at least. Yeah, no, it's so powerful. Changing your environment can be everything and just getting a fresh start. 
a lot of the, the, one of the quotes that I heard, this was early on and it always stuck with me. And I wish I, I probably should Google and see who wrote this, but it says it's, you can't heal in the same environment that makes you sick. Right. Mm, and so love that. it was so powerful when I first heard that. Cause I was like, man, and a lot of the times we're afraid to change our environment because that's all that we know. Right. So you said the party friends, but those are the friends that you grew up with. And so those are the people who allowed you to first get your, your, your first couple smiles, even though it yes. was in a way that wasn't going to be beneficial to your personal development growth and, and being able to show your child, you know, where they were going, but at the same time, there was some bit of comfort in there. And so changing that environment, yeah. it's risky, but it's, al yeah. it's always worth it. And it's not even them influencing you. It's even you influencing yourself because you're around that environment. You know, it's just so familiar, like you said, and you feel tempted to do what you normally do. But if you change your whole environment, yeah, it makes a whole difference. Yeah. Yeah. So talk to me about where did business come into this? Because it could have been easy, right, to just go get a job. And it could have been easy to not start your own thing. You're already battling just getting your, your, your parents and your family to feel like that you can be a success, right? And so where does it come in that you say, you know what? I'm not going to go work for anyone else. I'm going to start my own thing. I'm going to be a true entrepreneur. I'm going to solve some problems in this world. Yeah. So because I had a kid young, I experienced that whole, you know, corporate jobs not being flexible enough, you know, dropping your kids off um, early in the morning at it's like a preschool care, you know, so because yeah. if your work starts at eight or nine, you need to drop the kids off early. You need to pick them up late. And I remember feeling like, oh my God, what kind of life is this? It's just like kind of shoving your kid this way, that shoving your kid that way. And also not being in a job that you, you enjoy and not being able to easily change jobs and or telling them that, hey, I think I actually um, suit this role more. But they're like, you got to go back to uni and study this before we could put you in that role. And so I just realized, oh, my God, it's just so hard to control my future or I have a lot of disgruntled nine to five corporate people who have been there for 20 years and they're still complaining and they still haven't done nothing about it. And so I guess I started to see okay, do I want to be in this environment? Do I want to pretend I'm sick just to have a day off? Or do I want to change my life? And it started to get really depressing waking up to go to work. And so starting a business was, you know, something I definitely realized I have to do. And so I actually tried to start something while I was at work, you know, started an e-commerce store and I had no idea what I was doing. I was just like, you know, took the first opportunity that comes and did it. And when I was um, still working and they found out that I started a business, they found my business plan. <laughs> they actually, uh, you know, the HR people asked me um, and said, look, we found that you started a business. What do you want to do? You know, are you here with us or you want to leave? And I remember that I remember telling myself, this is my moment. Like this is that, you know, that important decision I need to make, even though I haven't made the business doesn't, hasn't even succeeded yet. I, I'm not even making money in here. It's actually costing me more money, but this is my moment of, you know, do or die, you know? And I, I was brave enough again, you know, that kind of attitude that I was rebellious going, you know what? I don't care. I can do this. Just like how I could have a baby. Who cares? <laughs> my, my personality has always been, like you said, ready, fire, aim. Let's just fire and see what happens. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to quit. And so I quit before my business even made any money, but I thought, you know what, just go all in. And so I got out and you know, ran my e-commerce business and it didn't succeed because I have no, I no passion about nail polish, no idea about this whole business side of thing, but I didn't stop because I kind of went, okay, well, what else can I do? I don't want to go back to a job because I can easily go and apply for another job. But that's when I started networking, going out there and meeting people. And I realized that because of my e-commerce business, I learned how to outsource. I learned how to get, you know, a website done. I know how to get designs done and using outsource workers from overseas that the new people that I was meeting was asking me questions that I knew because of my experience with that. Right. And that's how I started my digital agency that eventually made me money that sustained me since then, 2010, the end of 2010. And I kind of just grew from there. And so I think that's like, uh, like you said, sometimes you have to just be ready to go because in going into this new place, you learn new skills that you would never have learned. And then it's value enough to actually earn you money. And if you didn't have that years of that whole year of, for me was one year of just making mistakes in that e-commerce store, I wouldn't be able to start that next business. I love it. There's, mm -hmm. I feel like we're about to get into some really, really <laughs> fire, uh, combo. So I want so you go 
all of a sudden you say, okay, I'm going to use the skill that I know, which is outsourcing. Where does your first client come from? Where do you get the audacity to say, I'm going to charge you for what I know, not what I can do specifically, you know, like being able to use my time to do it. I'm going to leverage my relationships and what I already know. Where did that yeah. come from? Well, it didn't come natural. I was still a very honest girl. And I said to them, they're like, oh, I, know. I need to get a website done. And I'm like, oh, what? Why don't you go on Upwork? And there's these people that are very cheap. All you do is you post a job da, 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 and you can get it done like this. I basically told them what, what I do. And they said, oh, that sounds good, but I don't have time to do that. Do you have time? Do you have time to help me with the website? So I was like, oh, okay. And once again, say yes first and figure out how. And I just said, yes. And then I took on that project and got it outsourced at a cheaper rate and then just project managed the work and charged them. And I was like, oh, wow. How come money came so easily? Because sometimes you complicate things thinking that you need to come up, you know, come up with an idea, get a logo done, like do all this stuff before you make money. But you, I realized now in life, it's really about how do you make money faster and efficient and just get it, get the work done first and make money. And then you can reinvest into your business, right? And so I guess I had a few clients getting me to do some of these projects that I was like, I think I need a logo now. Oh, I think I need to register my business now. And so I did it the other way around. And nowadays I've duplicated in that way where if I have a new business idea, I don't go out there and start to set up a company and all that. I go and test it out with a client with, you know, trying to make sure that it validates and works. And until you've done that, then you go and register a business. And that's why I also also encourage to go and solve a problem rather than come up with an idea because you think it's a good idea. What problem are people asking? Try to solve it. And if you could duplicate that, then go and charge people for that and then register a business. Boom. There, there, there is the first one. That's, that's so validate the idea first. This is something I wish I would have known about. Now, I'll be honest. I never validated the ideas first. But I, I've learned that now that I've been in business and, and it's worked so well. I did this on my first course that I did. It was funny. I, I did a beta group and I basically asked people who wanted to learn about real estate investing. These people said, I do. I just told them to send me a DM. And then we started that out. And that was how I got my first 12 people. We did that for six weeks. I recorded recorded all of the content and then put that into a course. So I, man, I, I love that, that you're giving off the game right now for somebody who's just getting started. Now, how did you figure out how to price it though? Because somebody comes to you and they say, okay, well, I, I need a website done. And then you're like, you're already scared. So you're like, okay, well, what is your budget? And they're like, well, I, I want to get one done for like 250 bucks. Were you just saying, I need to make five, like if they say $250 is all their budget, were you saying I need to get one done for $125 so then I can get $125? Yeah, or so it kind of started like? like that. It was a bit of a guessing game as long as you put some margin in to earn yourself. But after you do one project, look, at the end of the day, it's like you're getting Pay to do work experience so I would see it like don't try to worry too much about like am I compensated well enough for this project because if you're new you also need to know how to do it and, and you're learning and of course you're going to come uh, coming in pretty cheap and the next project though you learn you learn okay that took me longer than it did and I also feel wow I'm really proud of my uh, result or the output of this project I'm going to charge it more so it's being able to build that confidence and and know how long something takes to be able to charge later on in the thousands of dollars. And, you know, after I did that agency for a few years, I also looked into my business model and said, okay, well, this model kind of limits me because I'm like project managing and everything's custom, right? Like you want this done, then I'm customizing it and, and project managing. This is like actually not very scalable. So I looked at it and changed my whole business model into how about I just outsource, how about I just hire these people for you? And instead of paying me, you know, $30, $40 an hour, to do this work, even though it's cheaper than the agencies that are located here. But what if you paid a third of that cost because I'm basically giving you that person to work directly and that way it's scalable. That way, like if you a need a high- upfront cost or a third of the re reoccurring revenue cost? Yeah. So for example, um, in the agency, let's say if I could get someone for $10 an hour to do uh, design work, I would then mark up maybe 30, 20, 30 dollars so that it covers my project management fee. So let's say a project costs 10 hours, it was $400, right? And you're, but then in Australia, if you pay an agency that don't use outsourcing staff, you're looking at $100 an hour. So that might have cost you $1,000. So it's still cheaper 
but it's not as cheap as if you're if I allow you to work with these outsourced workers. So I came up with a model where, okay, well, instead of me being the project manager going, you need this, okay, this person does that, check the work and be easy. What if I help you find that best, that great person, facilitate it in a way where onboard you, make sure you know how to work with this person, but they become your own staff pretty much, right? Now, I might only add 2 or $3 as my fee for, you know, finding you that person and, you know, making sure that you're both happy with each other, but I'm not really sitting there the whole way project managing. So I can take a lot smaller um, margin per hour. And so this is the model of outsourcing angel where, you know, we're, we're managing the, we help you find the virtual assistant, we call them virtual assistant, but they do more than just admin work. They do marketing and web development and everything, but we recruit, we take care of these VAs as if they're you know, we give them a community, we give them healthcare card, we give them all these things. They're from the Philippines. We do all that and, and, and also do payroll and pay them. And you pay us, we pay them, but you get to still pay them at a quite affordable rate because we're just doing the facilitation and helping. Whereas if I'm an, if I'm an agency model and I'm project managing for you, well, that's my time in, involved in your project. So of right. course you're going to have to pay more. And so this model in itself has really evolved and helped me scale it to a seven figure business now because it's, I can cater to as many clients and I don't need more of me. I just need, uh, you know, a few more of me to make sure that the client and the VAs are happy together, but not sitting in every client's project and delivering the result. Got it. So now in a sense, to simplify it, you have project managers that are now, you, you figured out a way to replace yourself. And now mm -hmm. you have other project managers because at the end of the day, for if I was to hire uh, outsourcing angel, y these people still don't work for me, correct? Like even though you're recruiting them and things like that, do they work for me or do they still yeah, work they for you? Yeah, they actually do. So basically they're your virtual employees. And so we are just as an agent helping you find that person, but they work directly with you at whatever time that you want them to work. And they even have your email address if you set them the email, they are your employee. Now, if you don't need them anymore, then we would try to help them find another job with another client. Now, working under us is really because we wanted them to feel loved and feel connected with their other people, other freelancers, right? Because if you're a freelancer working from home for a client, it's just you and the client. If the client's too busy to take care of you, you're just isolated and alone. Whereas we're just trying to make it easier for the client by giving them that community support, playing some company games and company trips just to keep them engaged. Because at the end of the day, if your VA is not engaged, they're not going to perform for you either. So of course, if you as a client can take care of them, that's even extra bonus. So we have clients that really do take care of their own employee and they bring them to Australia. And, you know, we have this kind of like relationship between us, the client and the VA. But at the end of the day, a VA is someone that works remotely and yes, they are a freelancer that is assigned to you, but if you don't take care of them, they can go, right? But anyone can go. Yeah. Even you as a client, if we don't take care of you, you will also go and just leave your VA like that. But we're trying to train the, 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 the society right now to see outsourcing that it's not about trying to outsource cheap tasks and get it done quick and cheap you're actually creating job opportunities for people living in poor countries like the Philippines. And they are the, this is their livelihood. And if we could actually all do a part in creating job op opportunities for these poorer countries, then we're actually eradicating poverty because the best way to eradicate poverty is to create employment for people mm -hmm. in those countries. And so I'm trying to switch people's mindset to how do you become a great leader to lead these people and provide for them and take care of them that they can take care of their own family and community and be that leader in there in on that way as well because you know we still have people coming in as clients thinking oh i just want to get this outsourced oh you know and what if i don't need them anymore and just kind of treating it too much like buying a bottle of water i buy it i'll throw it out kind of thing whereas these are people that if you keep them long enough they will know everything and understand about your business and yourself that they become an integral part of your business right? They right. imagine if you have someone working with you for a long time, they will know you inside out. But if you just treat them as the get this task done, get that task done, you'll never get to reap the benefit of a true outsourcing.
For sure. No, I, I think that that's fire information. And it's all about the relationship rather than the transaction is what mm -hmm. I take away from that. Right. And, and I think mm -hmm. that's an, we're all in a people business. It doesn't matter yeah. what your product or your service is. We're all in a people business. Even if you're automating things, a lot of the times you still need that person that's going to manage the automation because we know and in the tech side, things go wrong. So if people understand that, I think they're going to go a long way. The question that I have that I think someone else would have is they say, oh, man, I love this idea and I could see myself doing something like this and, and using Lynn as a mentor. But what happens if a business owner then cuts you? How do you protect yourself from being cut out if after three months they have a good relationship with that person who you provide it? And then they say, OK, well, we don't need to pay that 30 to 40 you know, dollar markup or upsell. Right. I'll just bring them on myself. How do you protect yourself? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So just to clarify, it's not the $30 up. It's only like $2. So this is the new model where we might charge them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still quite affordable. However, yeah, it comes down to value, right? Like if we're just literally recruiting for you and gave you that person and never helped you in any other way or helped the VA, then there is more reasons for you to feel, why do I need you in here? But as a client, we give them you know, we basically guide them how to work with the VA, how to grow a team, how to scale your business. So we have training programs like Instagram course. We have a um, VA performance management course that we're giving to our clients. They also have access to myself, my ops manager and marketing manager for business guidance because you can have the person, but if you don't know how to grow the, your business with the right tools and systems and operational ideas, you're not going to be able to grow your business. So we provide all of that as well as when your VA doesn't perform, who are you going to call? Who, and you know, so we also offer re, uh, replacement. So at the end of the day, you're dealing with people. You can't help if someone all of a sudden just stuck with their performance, like they were good. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what's going on here. So we deal with the whole HR management. It's being able to go, Lynn, can you deal with this person? Cause I don't know what's going on. I've tried to talk to her and she's a bit, whatever. So then we would you know, basically mediate and try to help out or, Hey, how about we help you find a replacement and then we'll help them find a replacement. Or we have clients that are like, my VA is, is about to have a baby. What do I do? It's a maternity leave. So we handle all that. So it's almost like outsourced HR department. Now, now you've got a HR department and on the other side, VAs as well, we provide so much value that they don't want to go anywhere. They've been a freelancer working with clients before they are coming to us after years of doing that was like i'm sick of working hard and the clients don't pay me the clients just drop me like that and i feel so alone in my 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 world now i feel like i have a purpose because our business is also very focused on charity work and so they feel like every time they work hard for a client we're growing our business so that we could fund community projects for their their community and so it's when you give value to people people won't go and ditch you now there are times when they do this is when you go you know what they're not the right client the ones that are thinking short term the ones that feel like i should cut you there are people like that you can't stop that but whenever it happens we actually don't cry about it we actually go good go ahead because if we if it was that easy for you to go ahead and you go and hire yourself then you would have done it and we wouldn't exist right we exist right. because there are people that will value saving time and having someone that just takes care of and peace of mind. So much wisdom there. I, I love the way that you explain that. Again, those are the people that they're not meant to be on your team at the end of the day anyway. And life as we know it is too short, no matter where you are, to be focused on the wrong types of people. So great wisdom, great insight, and, and just over-delivering, right? Most people look oh, at businesses and yeah. they get it on a surface level, right? But when you find other ways to contribute to their life, both the client as well as that freelancer or that contractor who still wants community, I think that there's so much value there and that's how you'll get people to stick around for the long term. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, no matter if they're a VA from Philippines or they're a client from Australia, treat, treat everyone with respect and love and throw, you know, almost give everyone the benefit of the doubt and throw your heart and soul to them. Now, if they reciprocate, it's great. And they will respect and be loyal to you for years and years to come. And there are ones that will always think for themselves or be a bit selfish, but that's just their life and let it go and never lose trust in people. Because sometimes you're like, you know what? I don't trust people anymore because they burnt me and I did that. Then you'll never be able to live in peace. And because there's actually more, more good people out there than there are bad. So I guess my lesson is just keep doing good though, because a good will come. God knows, God knows what's going on and he'll keep blessing you.
much. Yeah, so much fire. <laughs> Let me. There's somebody who's looking at you right now, and they say, "Oh man, it's been so fire what she's been able to do. How she's been able to continue to rise from the ashes, right?" But <laughs> if she could go back to you know, even when she was 19, knowing all that she knows now and how much wiser that she is, if there is one thing you wish that you would have changed, or if there's one thing that you wish that you would have just implemented a little bit sooner to accelerate your path to where you are now, what would that one thing be? Yeah. So I don't regret anything. Cause now I look back, I'm like, if I didn't have all those bad lessons and I wouldn't understand it deeply, you know, like if I give someone advice about a single mom or bulimia or being a drunk head and addiction or something, I wouldn't be able to truly understand and be compassionate because if I didn't go through it, right. But going through all that with that pain, I can now help. However, if I did, if I was to wish that, what can I learn earlier? I would say personal development. Like I was not exposed to it at all up until I was in 2010, which is uh, 23 or 20, I can't remember, 27, I got my age. 27 years old, up until then, I thought everyone see the same thing. I thought our brain worked the same. I thought we see everything in the same reality. And it was only until I studied personal development and did life coaching course that I was like, oh, so like something could happen and we both have different ex experience. I didn't know that. Or I didn't know that you could continue to grow your brain. And I don't know, it was just like, how come it wasn't taught at school? How come I wasn't taught gratitude? Even the simple things about being grateful and, and not blaming people, those are just to me now is simple lessons in life that should have been taught so early on. So nowadays my kids, there's, I, you know, I'm really wishing and I, I pray that they will turn out into good kids, but I know that they have a very high chance of turning out to be good kids because we practice gratitude. They're only four and five. And well, at that age was when I started teaching them every night, it's what was your best part today and shifting their mind into happiness and being grateful. And, you know, you can already see that a human mind will always default to something negative. Like even my son's like, well, I don't like that when you did this, I'm like, okay, so, but what was the best? And it's like, and it forces him to think. Right. And so training that, that early on is, you know, I can already tell that they will become better people and at least even just being at peace with themselves and rather than trying to battle with yourself or like, 20 something years. And so I think it's just the earlier that you could expose your kids to personal development so that they can continue to develop themselves, then your work is done there. Yeah, just like you, I wasn't exposed until I was probably 25, 26 to just understand and that there was another level of who you could become, right? And there was many more levels of who you could become because a lot of the times we thought that like it's it ends one day, like I'm already good, I've made it, I got a good job. Right. Or I, yeah. I made good money, but it's like, no, there's always another area in your life that you could become a better person, a better husband, wife, mother, father, friend, business owner, leader. It doesn't matter what it is. So that personal development. And it's just like it says, it's personal. We all have ambitions and dreams. And once you figure out that you want more out of life for you, that that personal commitment that you make. It's something that can never be matched. It's something that could really even never be described. So I think that that's a great way to put it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, exactly. And I love that. You know, my, there's a YouTube channel called Dara Man. Have you heard of yeah, Dara Man? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can't believe my oh, kids man, are yeah. right now. They're seven and five and they watch that stuff. And that stuff is deep. It's like story, movie, kind of short movies that are in, inspirational or teaching you good lessons. And I'm so proud that my kids even love that rather than watching like some other random show. So I think it's watch, be careful of what you consume and, and what you're putting in your head and mind because it's, it's, yeah, it, it yeah. makes a big. Have you ever heard his personal story? I can't remember if I did or not. Maybe I haven't. It's got a yeah. phenomenal personal story of losing everything and then getting it back. And, and uh, yeah, I think I first heard his story. Shout out to Andrew Warner, but it was from Mixergy, the podcast. I, it was the first time mm -hmm. I ever heard Darman's story. He's got a really mm -hmm. powerful story. So, yeah, but so let me ask you this. If you could have, uh, if you could have lunch or even dinner with one person dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oprah. Oh my God. She's my favorite person. I love her because she's so humble and I guess she's always been real. And she also inspired me that you can have any dreams, right? From her upbringing wasn't a great either. She wasn't, you know, she, 
yeah, she's in, she's the, you know, the best in the show business. And yet it's not like she's that typical, you know, Angelina Jolly look or anything or, or, you know, but then she's able to achieve everything as an actress, as everything else. So that really inspired me. And she's so deep in spirituality as well. So I really love that when I listen to her, I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally just trekking behind your journey right now. And, and her really, yeah, she's really into spirituality and which is what I'm into. And I literally reverse engineer her career path right now. So I decided I wanted to be an actor because I wanted to be more into storytelling and be part of movements in movies. So when you watch a movie, you watch a documentary or you watch something that can really transform you. Right. right. And so I, I thought I really want to be part of that. I want to be part of things that can transform people. And, you know, because I did a lot of podcasts and YouTube, I started to become more confident with, with being on camera and, and being that show person. And so I thought, you know what, I can, be an actor and then I just said okay who do I follow that I lo love that I can just I guess reverse engineer the her career path and so I looked at Oprah and said okay she started as a talk show and then she Did basically got talk show? yeah so I launched my own talk show now called Rice and Shine okay. uh, so it's a three Asian woman talk show that we launched this year and you know it's basically you know quite nicely produced it's not like our self homemade camera i'll send you the link to it as well it's called rice rice like eating rice rice and shine show and so you know now i'm hosting that and i i realized well you just got to get yourself out there and just like what oprah did quincy jones poached her into the the color purple movie and so at the end of the day it's not about you being the best actor it's you being out there to be known and to be um, build a brand for yourself and and you know it, it makes it easier for people to go okay you actually fit this role so why don't you audition for this role? And so anyway, that is my little path right now going, okay, I'll be the Asian Oprah first so that I could be in movies. And I want to be in movies like her where movies that are impactful. She's not in horror movies and thriller just to be famous. She's in movies that are meaningful. And that's the kind of path that I want to follow. Yeah. Well, we look forward to watching <laughs> your journey and I'm sure you will get there and I'm sure you will have a blockbuster movie. But the good thing about it is nowadays, like back then she had so many roadblocks and obstacles because there was, there were certain people who owned the industry, right? So mm -hmm. you could only get in there, but now with the likes of YouTube and you know, all these other things, you can really create your own block and even, you know, and Netflix and, and other big distributors that are looking for indie actresses and actors and even producers it is so much easier nowadays than when Oprah was first coming up. So I'd have no doubt that you'll get there. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think this is the best time that we live in now. It's just so much, it's everything is kind of a little bit more of a level playing field, right? As long as you, you put in the hard work and stay consistent and believe that this actually can come true. Because I think some people, when I tell that dream, they kind of like, okay, because it's kind of like so out there. Right. Or sometimes if I said to my husband, I want to be this, that, that, he's like, all right, show me. Because he goes, I'll believe it when I see it, right? That's what people say. I'll believe it when I see it. Whereas it's actually the other way around. Believe it and then you'll see it. Mm. But, some, but people haven't experienced that. So they kind of don't understand what you're talking about because it's not very logical or realistic. So right. yeah, that's that challenge. No, oh, this is, this has been a phenomenal conversation. The last question that I have for you is there's somebody out there that is, you know, they have that little voice in their head that we've all had before. And you've kind of alluded to it a couple of times already, but it says that they're not strong enough. They're not smart enough, or maybe they just don't have enough resources. What's the one thing that you would leave this person with to get them to just take action? Yeah. So I think, first of all, you need to feed your brain with just like you, if say if you want to work out on your body, you need a personal trainer or you need to work out. You also need to feed your mind with, with good stuff. So every morning, no matter how positive of a high energy person I am, I still make sure that in the morning I would, you know, listen to an uh, inspirational podcast or, or read the Bible, <laughs> but do something to feed that brain. And cause you need that motivation. And I also think, you know, have a healthy lifestyle exercise in the morning so that you've got that energy that boost. Cause you need to boost yourself, there's no hack to like trying to convince yourself to feel good. You actually need to feel good. So it's having that something to feed your mind, something to feed your body so that you are in a better mindset 
to, cons to have that motivation to hustle in life. And then the next step is just to find people that have done it and follow their path. And, you know, sometimes it's not about following the celebrity. It's about following someone that's close to your journey. At, that is just one or two steps ahead of you and go that if they could do it, I can do it. Because sometimes when it's too far fetched, you're like, oh, but they're rich and they're famous already. That's not possible for me. So why not find someone else that is more, uh, you know, closer to your journey and just follow their footsteps and see that if they can do it, you can do it. And every day, like you said before, surround yourself with good people, good environment, because you kind of need to bounce your energy off each other and talk to people to, to just, because every day is hard, you know, like, it, you know, success or dream sounds like one word, but it's a long journey. And every day is just one day at a time. And I would always tell, remind people to just do your best each day. Don't worry about tomorrow, worry about today, because tomorrow has its own worries. So every day I just make sure that I, I do everything I said I was going to do. So I make sure I schedule everything in journaling, you know, spending time with God, working on things. If I schedule it in advance and I've done that, I'm satisfied. And the next day I do the same thing, same thing. And all of a sudden things just start to change and shift and you never know it. So Right. Yeah. Don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will bring its own worries. That's a nugget right there. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think my wife said this to me, this is probably a year, year and a half ago, but she was like, what is anxiety? Right. When people say I have anxiety, it's really about worrying about the future and things that have even haven't even happened yet. Right? Yeah. And, and that's when people get anxiety. They're worrying about what could happen, but it's like, why are you worried about that? You're not even there like worry about what you have to deal with today. So again, phenomenal conversation, so much wisdom. For anyone who wants to stay connected with you, we will make sure that we put all of the links to find you in the show notes. But if for anybody that wants to stay connected with you directly, where can they find you at? Yeah, my website is lynnpadetti.com. I think that would be the best one. It's got a lot of my different businesses and social media icons in there. I'm not sure if I added the Rice and Shine show on there yet, but you can also find my more content on riceandshineshow.com. Um, but yeah, I'm all over LinkedIn and social media. So do add me in there. I'm very friendly and approachable. So I do connect with me because sometimes when I get a message from someone like, I watch your YouTube and I know you might not be watch reading this, but I just want to tell you this. And I'm like, hi. And they're like, oh, you'll respond. And I'm like, well, why not? You know? Yeah. So no, I, yeah, <laughs> I will respond because yeah, I appreciate, you know, any people reach, uh, reaching out and I've been in, in everyone's shoes before in that sense, because the people who reach out is people who have heard my story and can relate. And because I can relate to their story too, I always feel like I want to help in any way that I can. Cool. Well, mm -hmm. like, again, we'll put all of those links in the show notes, but just as she said, Dream Nation, you have to take action. You cannot worry. You just have to take it day by day and create your own habits. Because if you don't, that dream that you have will only merely be a fantasy. That's all for this one. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank all you. Right, we're all finished. Hopefully Thank that you. one wasn't too brutal for you. No, I love it. You're so calm and cruisy. And yeah, you, it feels like you've been doing it for a long time. You're so comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I, I just it's just conversations, right? It's what yeah. I love to do, have conversations, listen to the world's biggest, brightest, and most unique people, which I would definitely say that you're one of. Uh, <laughs> nothing but a good thing. So that's why I have the show, and I'm just hoping that somebody's story will be as impactful as yours have been for mine and someone else will tell you thank you based off of hearing you on this show and so thank you so yeah. much i would love to connect with you at another time yeah. just to learn more about your business and see if there's any way that I can help and we could work together in any other way so yeah, yeah just more of a different thing so yeah i'll be in touch yeah I, what what yeah. channel are you on most of the time um, i'm on all the channels to be honest with you so Instagram is probably my, my, I'm gonna, but I'm on LinkedIn too. So it's on, like you okay. said, LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook. You see my family on all the platforms. I got two yeah. young kids. So yeah, I'm definitely a family guy. I'm approachable just like you, but yeah, just connect me on whatever. If it's LinkedIn, connect me on LinkedIn, any of them, I'd love to be able to connect a little bit more. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks cool. so much. All right. Let's do a quick photo. Yeah. Smile. Okay. <laughs> See you, Casanova. Bye. See you, Lynn. Bye. Bye-bye. 
That's all we got for this episode. Thank you for sticking around. That truly means a lot to me. And hopefully that means that we delivered massive value on this one. If you haven't already, the way that you could say thank you to myself and the team is just by heading over to iTunes and leaving a review and a rating. That's what iTunes loves to see. That's how we get out there even more. And I would definitely, definitely be grateful for it. I know the team would as well. Do me a favor and head on over to dreamnationpodcast.com. That's where you're going to be able to find all of the resources that we talked about in today's episode, as well as more exclusive content. And you'll also be able to sign up to our email list where we have more exclusive content. And we always love to hear the feedback from you all because you're our tribe. So remember, in the dream we trust, we'll see you on the flip side.